with you guys this morning. Amen. I'm coming at you this morning. Amen. With a message that I'm entitling the pit, the palace, the pit, the prison and the palace. And what I will be talking about is holding your deliverance. Check this out, guys. You're going to love this. What I'm going to be talking about is holding your deliverance. Amen. In a situation where seemingly no change in the season whatsoever. Holding your deliverance in seemingly no changing seasons. Have you ever had a time where you've been seeking God for breakthrough? You have been praying and believing God, but it seems like there is nothing changing whatsoever. So I'm going to share with you guys today this message, the pit, the prison, and the palace. And I think you're going to enjoy this. Now, I'm only going to be on here for a while, so I ask you to sit back, praise God, and enjoy this Monday morning miracle faith message that I'm about to preach to you. Because there is a side of holding your deliverance and freedom that many people need to understand. Yes, you're going through warfare. Yes, there are situations where the attacks or the far darts of the wicked one or whatever you call it is constantly coming at you. But I maintain to tell you that God is able to keep you in the pit, the prison, and bring you to the palace. God is still God, and he's still on the throne. I like to use Joseph. Now, one thing I like about Joseph, Joseph was a dreamer. And the enemy of his soul came after his dream. How many of y'all know that the reason why you go through so much in life, why your families go through so much, is because the enemy recognizes in you a grace, a power, a gifting, a dream or a vision that he wants to destroy. It's nothing unusual. As a matter of fact, the Bible even said it like this, think it not strange of the fiery darts that will come at you. Think it not strange, my dear friends. Well, let me talk about this message, how to hold your deliverance where there seemingly is no change. You bind the loose. You broke generational and family line curses. And it seems like there is no change. Let's look at the life of Joseph. And the word dream here means to have a deep aspiration, to conceive a thought, imagination, or an idea. This word dream also means to have a desire to highly achieve something, to have a desire for purpose and intention. Got that? One's desire for their heart. Well, listen, that the enemy will come at. Now, in the book of Genesis, as we look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 19 and 20, that's Genesis chapter 37, verses 19 and 20. Number one, Joseph's brethren that attacked him did it because they were jealous. How many of y'all know not only can mankind be jealous of you, human beings, but also the powers of darkness can be jealous of the fact that God has redeemed us and blessed us. But let's look at the life of Joseph. Joseph's brethren decides here, here we pick it up, where they decide to throw him into a pit. Now, wait a minute. Here is this deliverer. Joseph was one who would deliver his family. Joseph was one, glory be to God, that the spirit of favor from God was upon his life. But yet, he had to go through a lot of attacks. Some of you are right in the middle of warfare, or you've been battling a stronghold in your personal life. The enemy been shooting arrows, regardless whether it's witchcraft, whether it's control, whether it seems like a cycle that just seems not to break. You've been going through that in your life until you're tired and you're wondering, God, how come I'm going through all of this? Check this out. Genesis 37, 19 and 20. And they, Joseph's brothers, said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Watch this. And verse 20, come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast have devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Now, if you look at it, there's uh, some powerful thoughts right here. Number one, the attacks that came against Joseph, Joseph, number one, was because he had dreams. They said to themselves, let us slay him and cast him into a pit. Now, this word pit in the original language is B-O-W-R, and it means a hole, a dungeon-like thing, right? 
Also, the word pit is B-U-W-S-H, which means to be ashamed, be disappointed, or delayed. Did y'all get that? They throwed him into a pit, which the word in English is B-B-O-R, B-O-R-E, bore, or B-O-W-R, bore. What they did was they throwed him into a place of shame. They showed, throwed him in a place of disappointment. Are y'all hearing this? They throwed him in a place of delay. Often there are words in the Bible that if you would go into your Strong's Concordance and examine these words definition, you will see the true spiritual ramifications of what's happening to a person's life. When his brethren throw the dreamer into the pit, they put him in a place that made him ashamed. How ashamed would you be that your own brethren, your own family, put you in a pit? It was his family, and this is not Attack Family Monday, but it is, preach it and tell it like it is. His own family threw him into a pit, a place of shame. His own family threw him into a pit, a place of disappointment. His own family threw him into a pit, a place of delay. When you're going through spiritual warfare, and it looks like your dreams and your hopes and your desires are coming under the attack, I maintain to tell you that the Spirit of God is with you in the pit, in the prison, and in the palace. So here he stands here. And look at this, people. The, when we go through warfare, how many of you ever gone through warfare? And it seems like the hardest thing you go through, it makes you feel nothing but shame. The warfare that you go through makes you feel nothing but disappointment. And also, the last beast is delay. I get a lot of calls on people who are right in the middle of trying to go forward in God, and they're stuck. Joseph was in delay, in that prison, in that pit. He was on his way to the palace, but he was delayed. Now, guess what? Delay does not mean de denial. Neither does delay mean that you're not going to be kept by the power of God. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, thou art with me. I want to say this to some of you out there. You may be in some shameful stuff right now. You may be in the midst of heavy disappointments. You may even feel like you are delayed, but God is right in there with you. Let's go to Genesis 39, 20 through 21. So y'all know what happens here. Joseph gets pulled out of the pit by slave traders. That's right. His brethren put him into slavery. And they sold him to this slavery. Are you hearing me? And it, he ended up being purchased by Potiphar. And when he got into Potiphar's house, even though he was a slave, he became the chief slave. I'm going to tell you something about the grace of God and the purpose of God on our lives. The enemy cannot stop the spirit of favor when it's on you. You will be favored in the pit. You'll be favored in the prison. You'll be favored in the palace. No matter where you go, the spirit of favor. Well, I don't feel like favors on me. I hear what you're saying. It's because you're concentrating and looking on the pit. Instead of the king, the king of God that is with you. You're looking at the pit and the situation instead of the spirit of God that will never leave you and have never forsaken you. So check this out. Joseph gets something that no man wants. Listen, let me tell y'all something. I don't want to go through what he went through. Now here he is. He's in part of his house. He's reigning over the servants there. He becomes chief over the servants, even in the midst of being a slave, a slave sold and bought by Potiphar. He still reaches a place of notoriety because the favor of God. I want to tell some of y'all something. Yes, you're going through. Yes, there are situations that are not turning out the way. You've been praying to God for deliverance, for healing or freedom. But I maintain to tell you, you have to know. 
that still God is with you. You have to tell even the sickness, you have to tell the situation, even those that are trying to mean you harm, let them know in Jesus' name, he is still with me. I am kept still by God's grace and power. Check this out. Joseph gets something thrown at him that no man would want, a rape charge. Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with Joseph. And because he did not sleep with her, she lied. Now, Lord Jesus, wasn't it enough to have your own brothers throw you into a pit, a place of shame, a place of disappointment, and a place of delay, and then turn around and you're working and you're saying, well, look, okay, things are looking a little better. I can see a little light in the tunnel. And then this woman charges him with rape. She gets a rape charge against a man who never touched her. She was lied on. In other words, sometimes on the road to your deliverance, unfair things can happen to you. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it one more time. Sometimes in the road of life and warfare and, 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 and things you're going through, sometimes you will be lied on. You didn't do nothing wrong. A lie was told on Joseph. But yet God still had his hand on him. And here goes where we pick it up at. Joseph is thrown in prison. Jesus. I mean, a pit thrown in there by my brethren. And now I'm getting ready to be sent to prison. Listen to Joseph. I'm getting ready to go to jail on a trumped up charge because I didn't sleep with this woman. Man, that's heavy. Man, that is heavy, folks. Look what it says in Genesis 39, verse 20 and 21. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. Jesus. Now his master says, you went after my wife, and I can't have that. Potiphar believed his wife when she said he tried to rape me. And so he puts him in prison. But listen at this. Verse 21 is the kicker. Here he is now going through all this. Lord, I can't take no more. I can imagine that boy saying that. Wouldn't you? I would be saying, Lord, I can't take no more. But God was still with him. Some of you right now are trying to get delivered from something, trying to get a breakthrough, trying to get a healing, and you feel like, Lord, I can't take no more. But I want to tell you, glory be to God, God is still there. Some of you have to look at the enemy and let him know God is still here. You got to get so Holy Ghost mean, so Holy Ghost bad that you said, I am not still. I'm going to deny that God is still my deliverer, and he will deliver me. I will stand upon his word no matter what comes at me. Check this out. Joseph's master, Genesis 39, 20, and 21. Joseph's master took him and put him into a, the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in prison. And the Lord was with, what? Whoa, verse 21. But. The Lord was with Joseph. What? Wait a minute. If God is with him, how come he's being thrown in a pit? If the Lord is on his side, how come he's being thrown in prison? I maintain to tell you that every one of those fiery darts of the wicked one that were trying to take Joseph out, God was with him. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Jesus! Oh, y'all heard me? Even in the fact that he was not delivered out of prison, even though he had not finished his affliction, even though he was in the midst of one thing after another, his God was with him and gave him favor. I pray this morning that some of us, us, notice I said we and 
cousins, some of us that are going through warfare in the family, warfare in the health, warfare with a tax coming on the job, our curses coming at us. I want you to know that still the spirit of favor will help us duck and dodge every single one of them. Even in the pit, we will come out in a place of authority. Even in the prison, God will cause us to have favor. That's what God did with Joseph. Now, you know how this goes. Now, y'all stay with me because I ain't going to be on here long this morning. Uh, in about, about 6 o'clock, I got to start doing deliverance sessions with people all over the world. Amen. Now, listen at this. Next thing you know, even in the prison, y'all know the story. Some of Pharaoh's servants have a dream, and Joseph interprets, it, interprets them. Now, what is the marvel of that story? God will not only be with you and give you favor, but the ability that's in you will sustain you even in a hard season. Can anybody hear me? Sister Sabrina, Beverly, do you hear me, girl? The grace and the gift that's inside you will sustain you. Hey, Sister Lisa Ray Coles, do you hear me, girlfriend? What, is, what God has inside of you, what he's birthed inside of you, you, would th you may be thrown in the pit, but it's going to still come out with you with God. You may be thrown into a lie, but it's still going to come out with you, and the spirit of favor is going to bring you out. Can't anybody hear that? Uh, my God, I feel like preaching this thing. Once again, the title of the message is The Pit, the Prison, and the Palace, Holding Your Deliverance in Seemingly a No-Change Situation. I'm going to say that title again. The Pit, the Prison, and the Palace, Holding Your Deliverance in Seemingly a No-Changing Season. Let's look at this phase three here. Now, in the third level that leads him to the palace, Joseph tells the jailer, the people that are in prison, their dreams, his gift. I would imagine somebody would say, well, what good is it having the Lord show you people's dreams, but you setting up in prison? I'm going to tell you what good it is. A man or a woman's gift will make room for them, and they will stand before kings. <laughs> wow, glory. Listen to what it says in Genesis chapter 40, verse 40 and 41. Joseph interprets the dream of Pharaoh himself. The chief goes back uh, and tells one of the Pharaoh's employees, goes back and tells Pharaoh, Pharaoh, you've been troubled by a dream. But I remember, how many know that God got somebody that he'll stir up the remembrance of you? I remember when you had me in prison. There was a young man by the name of Joseph. He told me his gift they actually told me my dreams and gave me the interpretation that I would be set free and you would set me back in order again. Pharaoh said, go get this man. How many know that the favor of God will go get you out of the prison? The favor of God will get you out of the pit. Even if the enemy does a trumped up charge against you, God's favor can bring you out. Let me go ahead and preach this thing. Y'all know how this, how this biblical truth went. I hate to call them stories because they're not stories. They're realities because they're in the word. God had Joseph to interpret Pharaoh's dream about famine. Here he is now, the man who was thrown in a pit by his own brothers, a man who had a trumped up rape charge on him, now is standing before Pharaoh, and God was with him. Through everything he went through, God is with you. I want to tell you, although you haven't got your breakthrough yet, you haven't got your healing yet, you're going through, I want you to remember God is with you. Sometimes you have to tell the host of hell. Sometimes you have to let jealous people know. Sometimes you have to let envious people know that I'm not bad. You ain't got to tell them. Just show them. But keep on rocking it. Keep on moving. Keep on pressing. Because God and his favor is with you. I'm going to say this to you all. You may be trying to get a breakthrough from a strong thing you've been dealing with for a long time. If you give up faith that God is with you, the enemy will close in and he will cause delay to smother you. Disappointment to smother you. He will cause, glory be to God, hallelujah, those strongholds that deal with being ashamed. To, to destroy you. 
Now, are you hearing me? Now, let's look at here what, what happens. Joseph interprets the dream. Now, in Genesis 41 and 40 and 41, here goes what it says. Thou shalt be over my house. What? How in the world did he come from? Pit, prison, now in the palace. Pharaoh says, thou shalt be over my house. And according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Good God Almighty. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Jesus. What? He went through all of that to finally reign in power. He went through all of that shame, delay, and disappointment that's called the pit. He went through all of that lust that came at him that he actually resisted, but the spirit of lust and perversion in, Far in, in Potiphar's wife lied on him about rape. He goes into prison and he steals. Actively dreaming. I mean, to tell you, that boy's dreaming dreaming ability just wouldn't die. I mean, to tell you, they couldn't kill the dream in that boy. No matter what happened to him, he, they could not kill the dream in him. And now the dream and the vision, the gifting and abilities, his deliverance came. And let me tell you all something. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, verse 41, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. What? Wait a minute. You got rape charges. And you over the land of Egypt now? Wait a minute. Your own family didn't want nothing to do with you. Your brothers is the one that throwed you in the pit. And now you are over all the house of Pharaoh, over all the land of Pharaoh. I maintain to tell you that Joseph's deliverance came, but he had to go to the, through the pit. He had to go through the prison. He had to go through what he went through. Now let me tell you something. Sometimes the things we go through, the enemy wants to make it us consume with that only and think nothing of our life is any other value because of what we're going through. But I maintain to tell you that the warfare you're going through very well may be not only the freedom for yourself, but the deliverance of many others. Are you hearing me? Finally, Joseph is in a position, strong position. My God, I'm going to read it to you run again. Genesis 41, 40, and 41. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. That's where Joseph ended up at in the palace. Pharaoh said unto Job, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And y'all know how it went. This biblical truth went. His brethren came during the time of famine, famine that he prophesied that he interpreted the dream prophetically. And when his brother came, Joseph ended up saving those in his family that put him in the pit. In other words, Joseph ended up, instead of asking for revenge, instead of doing them mean, you do me mean, I'm going to do you the same way, Joseph delivered. Joseph even said it later, y'all did this for my hurt and my harm. But God did this to make me a deliverer, to save both myself and you all. His bondage, his warfare, his trials, his tests was not just his own personal problem, but it became a healing situation to have not only set himself free, but his family free. I'm going to say this to some of you out there. You're battling for your deliverance. You're battling for your freedom, and it seems that you're in nothing but a pit. Nothing is changing. Nothing is breaking. You have nothing but delay, disappointment, and shame. And not only that, they lied on you on your job, and, and people that you thought you could trust, they seem like they failed you. But everything I want you to understand is everything that you're going through, everything you're going through, God and his favor is still with you. Hold that faithful thing with you. The Bible said the shield of faith will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. It didn't say there would be no fiery darts. It did not say in the Bible we would not go through anything. 
it did not say in the Bible we would not have trials and tribulation. There is no promise that promises us that. But there are promises that tell us that God will never leave nor forsake us. Neither will he give us any more than we can bear. Let me close out with this last verse. One of my favorite verses. And it's coming from the book of Habakkuk. Chapter 3, verse 17. Habakkuk had a mentality. Although Israel was taken captive, although Israel had gone through a season where it felt like God had departed and God had not, listen what he said. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat and the flock shall be cut off from the fold. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. In other words, from the pit to the palace, from the pit to the prison to the palace, God is keeping us. Are you hearing me? Well, look, I'm getting ready to get out of here because I've got less than a half hour to get myself ready to start doing counseling and deliverance sessions all day long well guys listen press through the mess don't think that god is not a healer or god is not a deliverer my dear friend no matter what god is allowing us to go through god is going through it with us he is not abandoning us see the enemy like to really kick up oh he likes to manifest strong i've gotten to the point in my life that i don't care what kind of thing that's coming at me? Guess what? When I find out that I can't do anything physically myself with what I'm going through, I have no other choice but trust God. If I can't lift it, it's too heavy for me. God help me, even unto death. Are you hearing me? I think there is a place sometime that we have in the New Testament church, the modern-day Christian, I, you are not, have not got in your spirit that guess what, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I'm not going to bow. I, I, if, if he slay me, I'm going to keep on serving him. And God ain't slaying us no hell. I'm not bowing. The attacks I'm going through, the warfare that I've been going through, I'm not giving in. You throw me in the pit, I'm going to keep right on fighting and keep right on standing and keep right on believing God because I know I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Testimonies from my past will prepare me for the things in my present and will elevate me to the place of my future. My dear friend, I'm not preaching that deliverance is you always get free the way you thought. You, God is going to do it the way you thought. Sometimes it may not turn out the way you thought, but it really comes down to this. No matter what you're seeking God for, you're going to have to trust God in making the decision of what you will do or go through. We have no control over what we will go through. Anybody that tells you, I say this as a deliverance minister, any deliverance minister that tells you that he can guarantee that you're going to get a breakthrough and the enemy won't bother you no more is a liar. That, that is not in the hands of man. It is in the hands of God. I don't care whether your title is the, the general of deliverance or, or whatever title you use. You ain't nothing but human beings. It's only by the grace of God that we get delivered. The day that we start putting our freedom and our deliverance in the arm of flesh and making them be equal to God, that is the day that we will not walk in what God has for us. My dear friend, the pit, the prison, and the palace. I hope this message helps you to hold your deliverance and seemingly no changing seasons. To hold your faith in God when it seems like you're stagnant, stuck, and not moving. And guess what? If you don't know what to do where you're at right now, remain still and see the salvation of the Lord. When you can't physically do anything, you prayed, you bound, you loose, you broke curses, you quoted verses. When you have done all of that, having done all the stand, stand anyhow. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. This is a message about while you're going through heavy warfare, thrown in the pit, thrown in the prison, just know that God is with you. 
Because if the enemy can get you to become weary in well-doing, the Bible says it like this. I think it's, I think it's in Galatians 6. It says, be ye not weary in well-doing, for you shall be rewarded in due season if you faint not. The enemy wants you to faint. He wants you to fold, to become worn out in strength, hope, and fervor. That's what he desires. Stand fast on him. God is a deliverer. God is my strength. God is our helper. God has not forsaken us. Even in the midst of this crazy season that the whole world is going through, God is going to sustain us. I mean to tell you, I, the government will not sustain you. Your preacher ain't going to sustain you. Are you hearing me? It's going to be God. Are you hearing me? We have to understand God is still in charge, and God got our back, and God has not forgotten us. I want you to know that. God has not forgotten you. I'm getting ready to get out of here, and I tell you all like I usually do. Remember, God is watching.